does your grandson understand your uh, belief in Jesus? Yes. I said, well, then, okay, as long as he knows that, then I suggest that you do go to the ceremony, mm -hmm. and I suggest that you buy them a gift. Welcome, guys. Thank you uh, for joining us, and we're going to get started. So we're going to dive into without our... Uh, uh, without any delay okay so the first clip that i have i want to share with you um alistair Begg. okay pastor alistair Begg is a good faithful preacher i have no issues with him he's been faithful uh he's a good godly man of god but they he did make some remarks that I was even disappointed that uh, Pastor Alistair Big would say something like that. I'm expecting to hear something like that from Ander Stanley, Branda Robertson. We wouldn't be surprised. But since it was Alistair Big, you can understand how everybody was like, no, 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 no. What happened with the preacher? So I'm going to uh, play the video for you guys. Shout out to Protestia. Be sure to subscribe. Okay, here we go. I think every pastor who preaches, every author who writes a book like this it comes away thinking, I hope my readers or my listeners will think differently as a result of their interaction with this, will will feel differently and will act differently. As you think about this book and your prayer for this book, what do you hope will be different? How do you hope people will be different after they have read uh, this book and they've meditated on this sermon? Well, first of all, you know, I hope that I will be different. Um, the old song that we never sing, you know, it's not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. I mean, that that is that is foundationally the case. Um, and so I hope that that would be multiplied. I hope that, that um, our church family, those who choose to uh, read this book, that we that it might have an impact among us because learning to say i'm sorry learning to say please forgive me learning to say you know i'm not at my best at the moment can you come alongside me learning to say yes i know that these people believe a very different agenda that their lifestyle is orientated in another direction and learning to say but i have no basis upon which i could argue that i would myself would not be where they are were it not for the amazing grace of god were it not for his compassion towards me and in very specific areas, this comes across. I mean, you and I know that we field questions all the time that go along the lines of, uh, my grandson is about to be married to a transgender person, and I don't know what to do about this, and I'm calling to ask you to tell me what to do, which is a huge responsibility. And in a conversation like that just a few days ago, um, and uh, people may not like this answer, but I asked the, I asked the grandmother, does your grandson understand your uh, belief in Jesus, yes. Does your grandson understand that your belief in Jesus makes it such that you can't countenance uh, in any affirming way the choices that he has made in life? Yes. I said, well, then, okay, as long as he knows that, then I suggest that you do go to the ceremony, mm -hmm. and I suggest that you buy them a gift. Hmm. Oh, she said, H -h 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 what? She was caught off guard. I said, well, here's the thing. You're, you're not going to, your, your love for them may catch them off guard, but your absence will simply reinforce the fact that they said these people are what I always thought, judgmental, critical, unprepared mm -hmm. to countenance anything. And it is a fancy, it is a fine line, isn't it? It really yeah. is. And people need to work out their own salvation with fear and trembling. But I think we're going to take that risk. We're going to have to take that risk a lot more if we want to build bridges into the hearts and lives of those who don't understand Jesus and, and don't understand that he is a king. All right. So I just wanted you guys to be able to hear it from start to finish. That way you know exactly what he's sharing. So according to Pastor Beg, he actually prefaced himself that a lot of people are not going to like what I'm, I'm about to say. So to me, that tells me he knew what he, uh, what he was about to say. People are not going to like it. But that's not the issue. The issue is not about people liking what he said or what he didn't say. But was that a good advice that pastor gave to the grandmother? Biblically speaking, given the position that Alistair Big holds, a lot of people listen to him. A lot of people do follow him. That's not how you give that particular answer. The grandmother was even surprised to be hearing an answer from Alistair Big. And his response was, well... They'll be more surprised with you when you show up uh, to the wedding, buy them a gift. 
So even the grandmother knew that, no, this is not in keeping with uh, uh, what I believe, let alone to be hearing that from Alistair Beg. So if Alistair Beg is advising the grandmother to buy a gift, to go to a wedding, okay, that is in contradiction what the word of God teaches. Because we know uh, he who created them, male and female, according to Genesis 2. Anything that is outside of that, you can call it loving till cows come home. It is not loving by any stretch of imagination. So for Alistair to have answered that way, that, that that was him giving that woman a very bad advice. Not only that, remember, as teachers, right, they will be judged with a stricter judgment. Because whatever you say, people are going to follow that. So by him answering it in that way, he just misled that, uh, that grandmother. Buying a gift to that particular wedding, you might be saying with your mouth, that you don't believe what they're doing, but you buying the gift, you have just given the hard approval. So remember, we our actions are in word and in deed. So if you're saying something else, your action is something else, that's not how it goes with the scriptures, right? It has to be matching. That's why we're able to say like, wait a minute. So they're going to go to that wedding, right? The, the grandkid will be confused. Wait a minute. But my grandmother does not support what I do. Mm, she bought me a gift. Oh, well, maybe now she has changed. She's on my side now. You see what I'm saying? She's on my side now. By her not going to the wedding, to the to the wedding, right? She is actually standing firm on what the scripture teaches. That that is not a wedding. So that is not a wedding. So there's no way I'm going to show up at that particular quote unquote wedding. Not only that, Jesus says what he's coming to divide what families, right? <laughs> so this is this is the persecution that Christians we should be willing to suffer. Otherwise, the world is going to love us like, okay, they show up uh, to our wedding, but we have just compromised on what God teaches us. So I uh, think uh, Pastor Alistair Beg over here, he did not answer it appropriately. If I don't have any issue with uh, Pastor Alistair Beg. I would recommend him. He's a good preacher. He, um, good books, good material. Everything uh, is good. There is no pattern of Alistair Begg to be compromising. This is my first time hearing him uh, giving this compromising answer. Okay? So if you ask me, uh, should we cancel Alistair Begg? No, we shouldn't cancel Alistair Begg. Hopefully there's people who know him are going to be able to reach out to him and he's going to uh, uh, retract this statement because this is a big issue. This is not something that we can just overlook. Something that we can be like, ah, it's fine, people can... No, 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 no. God has already spoken. Male and female. Anything outside that, we should not be entertaining by any stretch of imagination. Let alone giving other people uh, bad advice. So this was not uh, in keeping with Alistair Begg's character. Okay? It was in keeping with his character. With everything that most people know and with everything that I know. He, you know, he does have that Scottish accent. So we're still not going to give Pastor Alistair Begg a pass because of the Scottish accent. <laughs> when I hold his feet to the fire. But, you know, unless if he continues this type of behavior, then we're going to, uh, you know, uh, assess at that particular time. But at this point, this, he was definitely wrong. I'm sure that he's going to, uh, he's going to bring a correction. But what say you guys? I'm interested to know what are you guys saying? All right, guys, that is all that I had for you guys today. I hope you find this to be informative to you. Be sure to subscribe on my channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Until next time, remember to be in the know. Thank you.